The Hong Kong Special Administrative Region is special. It is special because it has an access to democracy that is not seen in mainland China. But what does this democracy look like? At first glance, the system looks relatively simple. Every four years, Hong Kong is vote to elect the Legislative Council, which we'll call LegCo. The council sits within a single house and passes new laws. But scratch the surface and things start to get weird. Although LegCo is considered a single house, it mostly behaves as two houses. This is because the council is split into two halves. The first half are elected geographically. So like many countries, Hong Kong is split into different areas, and each area elects a certain number of seats according to the population of that area. And this works pretty well. Usually the proportion of voters for a political party reflects the number of seats they receive. But this only accounts for 35 of the 70 councillors. Where do the rest come from? The remaining councillors are elected to what's called a functional constituency. These are 28 special interest groups who are somehow involved in the Hong Kong economy. They range from tourism, labour, medicine and health services, to legal, finance, accounting and catering. That's right, catering. Most of these special interests get one seat, except for labour, which represents the unions and gets three seats. And how is someone elected to these seats? Well, it depends on the seat. If you are a member of that industry, then you might just get a vote. Maybe. But some corporations can also get votes, and some seats are entirely decided by institutions rather than individuals. For example, if you are a bus driver, you don't get to vote for the transport seat, but if you are one of the 178 transport associations, then you do. What this means is that the vote for a functional seat is much more powerful than a vote for a geographical seat. Whereas a geographical seat is decided by about 50,000 voters, the finance functional seat, for example, has just 132 voters. So a single vote in the finance seat is worth nearly 400 times a regular geographical vote. The only exception is education, which has about 80,000 voters. And if you've been counting, you'll notice that there are five seats left. And they are voted on by everyone who is not represented by another functional seat. In the last election, one and a half million people voted for these five seats. So a vote here is six times less powerful than a regular geographical vote. But as I said before, LegCo is like a two-house system. And not just because of the way it's elected, but also because of the way it works. A law must get a majority of votes from both the geographical and functional halves. So in this way, one or the other cannot dominate the council. Except, LegCo is not the only contributor to laws. Hong Kong also has a government that is separate from LegCo. The government is led by the chief executive, who is chosen by an election committee of 1,200 members. Basically, the government can submit potential new laws to LegCo. But when they introduce the new laws, the rules of LegCo change. Instead of requiring a majority from each half to pass, it just becomes a simple majority of the whole council. This might seem like a small change, but it actually gives the government a significant amount of power. When you calculate the power of LegCo, as we've seen in previous videos, you can include the government as a voter. They are the winning vote if they introduce the legislation when LegCo has a simple majority but not yet a double majority. And this is the case about 3.95% of the time. Because LegCo members have an equal share of the remaining vote, they have about 1.37% of the power each. Before the 2012 election, the number of councillors changed from 60 to 70. Although this looks like it is just a simple increase in 10 councillors, it has unexpected impacts on power. If we look at the change in power of councillors, we see that their individual power has decreased. This is what you'd expect as their power is being divided between more people. However, if we look at the power of the government, it also declines, and quite substantially. And this is because of two separate impacts. As the number of councillors increases, the power of the government slowly declines. This decline is not linear, and the size of any changes becomes smaller with larger councils. But there is also another impact. The size of each half of LegCo is really important for determining power. When the size of each half is even, the government has a significantly larger impact than when the size of each half is odd. The increase from 60 to 70 changes the size of each half from 30 to 35. And this is what primarily damages the power of the government. This system is pretty complex, and again we can see how small structural changes can have drastic impacts on power. Any future changes to this system need to be thought out carefully before they are implemented.